I thought I would pop on tonight and talk to you about tips to lose weight over the holidays. So we are in holiday season with Thanksgiving being the next holiday that comes up and then that kind of rolls into the month of December. And there's a lot of things that you can do to ensure that you stay in control, that you lose weight, that you feel good, and that you're not hooked or sabotaged by the environment or a family member or a relationship or pressure, all those things that get mixed in that often drive us to eat. We're gonna talk about some tools today to make sure that you have set yourself up to remain in control, to be the one in charge and that you're choosing your foods and you're choosing your responses and you're choosing your experiences. So if you're watching, say hi, tell me what center you visit. If you watch later on the replay, tell me you're watching on the replay and feel free to ask any questions. Uh, we watch this and we'll respond as if you were live. First thing I wanna say, uh, I was a client, I lost over 70 pounds on this program. Uh, I started in the summer, so I was in the midst of my weight loss journey, the first holiday. And I can tell you that it is possible to lose weight. I lost weight in November. I lost weight in December. I actually lost more weight in November and December than my average typical monthly weight loss. Um, it's not because I'm a rock star. Um, it's not because of anything special. It's just that I was given a few strategies and some ways to look at things that shifted and twisted the way I saw the holiday season. So I do know that it's possible. I have also coached thousands and thousands of clients and seen many, many, many people lose sometimes even more than their typical or average weight loss over the holiday season. So the first thing, tip number one, is to choose right now the type of experience you wanna have for the rest of the holiday season. It is a choice, but you have to consciously make it. You have to say to yourself, this holiday season, I'm the one in control. I will be in charge. I will use my tools and skills. The food will not control me. The environment will not control me. I will lose weight this month. This month, the month of November, I'll lose 12 pounds. I've already told you guys the magic secret. Now, I'm gonna tell you again in case you're, you are new to my videos. The very best way I know to tell your mind how to lose weight is to state the weight you want to weigh next. So if you currently weigh 190, you say to yourself repeatedly, I weigh 185, I weigh 185, I weigh 185. You don't say, I hope I'll weigh 185 because the subconscious brain doesn't hear those words. It doesn't hear hope and wish and might. That's not action oriented. You say, I weigh 185. And then as you go from 190 to 185 and you get to about say 187, you start saying, I weigh 183. I weigh 183. Your mind isn't stupid. You can't be like, I weigh 130. <laughs> you say, ah, mismatch. Throw it away. You have to tell it just enough that's possible and leave out all the soft words. No wish, no might, no hope. I weigh and insert five pounds down from where you want to be next. Take your weight today, take five pounds off and repeat it over and over and over again. It works. It works, it works, it works. Not because you're just saying it, it'll happen, but because you are, you are telling your mind that that's what comes next, therefore your mind will send you messages to do all the things you need to do. Don't forget to make your breakfast for tomorrow morning. On the way out the door, oh, you left your lunch in the fridge. Don't forget to run back in and grab your lunch. Oh, you're on your way out. Grab a bar and a protein drink in case you need it. When the mind has a mission, when it knows where it's going, it will send you cues and reminders and um, assist you along the way. And that's why my little trick of stating I weigh works so well. So first step is to choose now the type of experience um, that you plan to have for the rest of the holiday season and make that choice as vivid and clear as possible. How much will you weigh? What will you do? What are the steps? I'll walk more often. I'll journal more often. I'll meal prep more on Sundays so I'm in more control. You need to see what it looks like to choose success. 
paint a big picture in your brain. If you are a, a writer, write it all down. If you see in movies and pictures, place it out and play it out in your mind. But make sure that you choose right now the type of experience and you make it vivid and clear to yourself what that's gonna look like. If you're watching, say hi. Okay, step number two for holiday success, plan ahead. Plan ahead. Make sure that you have a plan for all of the things that will come your way. So when I think, the first thing I think about when I think about planning ahead is making sure that I, if I'm going out somewhere, if I'm going shopping, if I'm going to someone's house, I always have a backup in my back pocket. I've always got a protein drink. I've always got a bar in my purse. I've always got something with me. I might carry a 100 calorie pack of nuts and let that be my healthy fat. I always have an extra, my next serving of um, vitamins and herbs. I carry along super fruit and veggie. All these things that I know that will give me a backup should things go awry, that will make sure I can nourish myself if I get off track and I find myself hungry or hangry, then I've got, I have tools. I'm not left um, without choice. Making sure you always have choices will help you to um, be more in control. So plan ahead. The next part of plan ahead was when it comes to meals. So if you're going out to dinner, if you are going to a cookout or a potluck or even Thanksgiving, knowing ahead of time what you're going to eat or order or how you're gonna handle that event will make you more likely to be successful. If you walk in somewhere and you have no plan or you go to a restaurant and you have no plan, you will quickly become hijacked and you will feel panicked and then you won't know what choice to make and that that for many people causes us to become derailed. We become overwhelmed and frustrated and say cheeseburger and french fries. And we might be at a cheeseburger french fry restaurant and that is the logical thing to order. But in a normal time when we were in control and we were thinking clearly, we would look around and realize, oh, they have a bunless burger. Oh, you know what? We would see other things. So planning ahead for all sorts of situations will always help you. Look ahead at a restaurant menu before you go. If you're going to a potluck, take something with you that you know you can eat. Offer to bring two things if you'd like. Look like the greatest guest ever, but two of those things are two things that are for you. So you brought two dishes and you got your needs met at the same time. The next thing is to watch your internal dialogue. That's number three. Um, we, uh, we do a lot of this this time of year. Oh, I'll really get serious in January. And it doesn't really matter. I'll start next week. Oh, I'll just wait till I get past Thanksgiving. And then Thanksgiving comes to me. Oh, I'll just wait till I get past New Year's. And then New Year's comes and now we've gained 25 pounds and now we really struggle to get restarted. So listen to that internal dialogue when it's kind of giving up on you, when it's throwing in the towel, when it's trying to sabotage you. Stop it. Stop it. Turn it off. Erase it. Cancel. Erase. Delete. Get it out. Throw it in the trash. And then replace it with, I'm in control. This is easy. I weigh whatever we want. Go back to my number one. You weigh 190, you want to weigh 185. Every single time you hear, I'll wait till January, you say, I weigh 185. I weigh 185. When you hear that language come up that is saying, I'm not going to do it. I'll just wait. I'm going to sabotage myself. Tell that voice in your head to shut up and then replace it with what you really want for yourself. Okay, I don't know what number I'm on. <laughs> I think I'm on number five. Um, every day is not Thanksgiving. So we somehow, we like, it hits November 1st and it's like, Thanksgiving. No, Thanksgiving is the one day on Thursday. Remind yourself that every day from here on out is not Thanksgiving. Today is a normal day. And today you eat normally. And so whatever you do on Thanksgiving day is up to you. But the day before and the day after and all this week, this is not Thanksgiving. Don't turn 
November 1st until December 31st into Thanksgiving. Don't turn it into just a big, long <coughs> holiday. There are going to be two or three holidays. Those are specific days, and they're three days. But we don't need to throw 60 days out the window for three. Even if you throw three days out the window, you don't need to throw the other 57 out the window. So, every day is not Thanksgiving. Allow Thanksgiving to sit on its own. Allow your holiday to sit on its own, and that's a special day. All the other days are days that we lose weight and feed ourselves well and take care of our body. Okay, next, think about creating new traditions. Use this as a time to create some new traditions. Think about the way that your Thanksgiving or other holiday events are set up. They're mostly completely centered around food. There will still be food, but you can create other traditions that are not so food centric. Think about creating other things that your family does that are not related around food. My family kind of gets together and it's, you get there and you start eating the like stuff that's laid out, right? Then you have the big meal, then you take a little break, then you have dessert, then you take another break, then you start with coffee, which is loaded with other stuff. And this is like the whole day is like mapped out every two hours with the next food event. Maybe you change that a little bit and maybe there's one food event, that's the meal. And you create some other things to do every other two hours. This is the perfect time to do that. Hit the like, hit the, hit the um, heart button. Tell me hi, tell me that you're watching. I see a bunch of you on. My next tip, I have number six, but I think I'm on number seven, whatever, roll with me. Let's call it number six. Sleep. You've got to get enough sleep during the holidays. Make sure that you are focused on both sleep and hydration. They're both really important. Um, when we sleep at night, you know sleep's important to the body, sleep's important to reducing stress, all of those things. But your body, your mind is cleared. Sleep at night for the brain is like housekeeping. So all of the thoughts for the day are moved into their file cabinets. All of the clutter and stress and frustration is vacuumed away. And when we sleep, we do our housekeeping, we do our deep cleaning, we move our thoughts to the proper place. When we're not getting enough sleep and we're under a lot of stress and a lot of pressure, we don't finish the housekeeping process. And then we wake up with yesterday's dirt. Get enough sleep at night. Let your brain clear out the dirt. Do all the sweeping and all the vacuuming and all the dusting so that you can wake up tomorrow with a clean, clear mind. The same kind of applies to hydration. Making sure you're well hydrated. I'm like Pavlov's dog. I talk about how hydration I have to drink. Um, if you're not hydrated enough, first off, more than 50% of the time we hear a cue from our body and we think we're hungry, we're actually only thirsty. So unrelated to this topic and this, this session today, when your body sends a cue to you, you hear hunger because that's what we hear. Oh, I need something. Most of the time your body needs water. And you know, I know a lot of times we tell you, I'm hungry and we say, have you had water? The real reason that we say that is because we know that the cue, you, you, you got a cue to your brain and then your brain perceived it to the front of your mind as hunger when actually the cue was, was needing hydration. So making sure you're well hydrated will um, A, reduce hunger, will B, will help with regularity, especially if you're traveling. You might've watched my video earlier today on, on good bowel movements. It's really important through the holiday season that your whole gut is clean, that you're drinking enough water, that your body's moving well. So keep hydrated. It will help you remain in control um, and it will reduce the feelings of hunger. Okay, next to last one. If you bite it, you write it. Track, track, track. I brought my journal. Did I not bring it in? Eh, maybe I didn't. Oh well, track everything you write in whatever you use. If you use the MRC Success Planner, make sure that you're writing everything. Listen, don't hide things from your weight loss coach. This is like going to the doctor and not telling them that you have a sore throat. I'm here, but I feel great. The doctor's like, well, why are you here? So if you're not on track, if you're having extra foods, we're not your judger. We're not your punisher. We're your partner. We need to see what you're eating and when you're eating, what's hooking you, what's hijacking you, what's getting you off track. 
so that we can help you make a plan to stick something in instead. The other reason that you record everything that you eat is because it creates a record for you. And when you're losing weight, if you can be a great curious detective, your weight loss will get easier. Go back and look. Last week I lost three pounds. What did I do so great? Study it. The week before I only lost one pound. What was different? When you can start to spot it, if you're having candy each day and you can start to spot, okay, every day it's at three o'clock in the afternoon, I have the candy. What's happening at three o'clock? Is it something to do with the kids? Is it a assignment at work? Is it, what is it that is occurring at 3 p.m.? Is it something you're getting uncomfortable that's gonna happen at 4 p.m.? When you write it down and you're specific, you can start to find the cues and the clues that will help you to break that apart and undo it. So if you, if you eat it, you write it down. If you bite it, you write it. Go to your center often, 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 often. Make sure that you're meeting with your coach and weighing in regularly. It is the coolest thing in the world that you have a human that sits in there and waits for you to come in and then sits down across from you and is interested in nothing but your success. You sit down across from someone who's going to devote 15 minutes to you sharing your needs. When are you hungry? When did you have your last bowel movement? How well are you sleeping? What's your favorite recipe? What kinds of foods are you missing? It's awesome. And it keeps you on track. Again, I say every time, you don't go into your way in and have a magical experience. What you go into your way in and have a effective thoughtful, forward-moving visit with your coach that takes you from where you are and can give you success for the next three to four days. And then you meet with your coach again and you make a plan for the next three to the four days. That is how you go step by step by step and get to your goal. So making sure if you need more support, get more. If you wanna text us your weight every morning to be accountable, do it. So you've got, you can come into your center, you can call us on the phone, you can communicate by text, you can send us emails, but make sure that you're communicating regularly and do not underestimate the power of your weigh-in and your weight loss coach. It is the difference maker. Okay, if you find that your stress level is high right now or your stress level gets high as you approach the holidays, quarter trim, helps your body to respond adequately to stress. This is the product that helps you to better manage your stress. I'm talking about stress coming in, how you receive it, how you internalize it, and how you let it go. The better you roll with the punches, the easier things are. Quarter trim, you can take up to six per day. If you don't take six, now might be the time to consider taking what's called the advantage dose to give you that support you need through the holidays. The other thing I wanna bring up today is making sure that you have your fat and carb blocker. So when you go out to eat or you go to your Thanksgiving meal or whatever, um, anytime you're eating food that you don't have 100% control over, it's the right time to take the fat and carb blocker. So those are my tips for today for you for remaining in control and in charge and losing weight over the holidays, you will and you can lose weight.